Now let's also create maybe another lambda expression here. Let's call this one repeater. So repeater, uh, we'll want to say, maybe you want to do something over and over, kind of like a, a um, very similar to like a, a loop would have. So let's do the same thing. Let's create the same signature here, but this time we're going to say repeat five times. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to call the block five times over. All right. So then what we could do is we could do something like this. And we're going to, I'm just going to comment this out for now because we don't want to see that inside of the output. So we'll say repeater and then it's going to take it in a block. And so inside of here, I can just say print ln hello. And what's going to happen is when I run this, repeater is going to run and it's going to print it five times in a row. But now, of course, we're trying to make our application a lot more uh, user friendly. So we want to be able to provide how many times we think these things should repeat. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and say, all right, I want number five in here. And so I'm going to say number five, but there's no way we can tell a repeater to do that, but we can. So we can go down here and say, how you know, how many times do we want you to repeat? And that's an integer value. And I can take the integer value and just drop it right into this repeat function. Again, we're kind of duplicating what's happening here, but I'm basically telling, hey, I want our little repeater to run five times. And then what's going to end up happening is it's going to run five times. Now, for whatever reason, later on, I decide I want this repeater to run, you know, three times or, or you know, 13 times. I'll run this here. Our little repeater thing will run 13 times. Now, I, as I start thinking about it, eventually I realize it would be really great if there was a way that I could understand, that I could get to what iteration I was on. Because I realize that when I am going to repeat five times, um, I want to say hello three times. So hello three times. And then I want to say goodbye two times for whatever reason. So how would I do that? So I want to say print line. And I'll say goodbye. But how am I going to say that on the first couple of iterations? I don't know what that is. So what I need to do is expose that value to the block. So basically I need to tell the block, hey, you need to be able to get some value. Now remember, this value, this right here is the input type. There's no input types here. We didn't provide any, any parameters. It's still going to return a unit. So it's not going to do anything. But what I wanted to change this to is say, hey, you know what? I want this block. So again, this chunk of code, I want it to be able to accept a parameter. And this parameter is going to be an integer value. And now immediately what you'll notice right, is, is right here, we have a squiggly error saying, hey, there's something wrong. And what that means is that we need to pass a value in there. Now, little did you know that the repeat function that, that is built into the standard library actually gives us an index. We just were not using it before. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use it now. And so I'm going to pass in the index. And every time the repeat function fires off, it's going to give us an index. I'm going to send that, that index directly back to our block. And it's going to get called inside of here. And so let's go ahead and use our index. There's our index. And now we can do something with it. So what we can do in here is we can say if index is less than three, go ahead and do this. And else we're going to go ahead and print this. And so now if we run this, what we're going to see here is hello, 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 goodbye, goodbye. Because what's happening is the index is being printed. So let's go ahead and print the print line on the index. For each iteration of this loop, so we can see down here, each time, so remember, we're calling repeat, which is built into the Kotlin standard library. It just tells, hey, repeat this, this little, you know, this little function however many times we tell at the time we told it five and each time it iterates it's going to call this block and this block all this block is is this chunk of code here this is the block and what it's going to do is it's going to pass its current index in here which is what we decided to do here and now we can decide to start iterating inside of here and you know perhaps perform some logic and if it's less than three of course we're just going to print hello otherwise we're going to print goodbye now this could be done for any number of things. We could decide to use the index. We decide not to use the index or whatever. And again, if we don't want to use it, we don't have to. We can just kind of get rid of it. Uh, again, we'd have to make sure we're not using the variable, but here we are. Uh, so this is how you can go ahead and pass a variable into a Lambda function and basically receive that variable back into the block itself. So we've created a function called repeater. We're going to tell it how many times it needs to do something. And then we're going to say, hey, every time you do something, we want you to call a, a particular function 
this function, we're going to call it block. It's going to take in an, an integer. I don't care what the integer is, but it's going to take in an integer and it's not going to return anything. And then inside of our, our function, we say, hey, we're going to use the built in function called repeat. It's going to repeat. And then every time it's going to give an index and we're going to pass that index into here. Now I could pass any number I want to here. If I wanted to the whole time, I could just pass the number three. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the index. It could be three times a thousand. It doesn't matter. All this block, all this function signature is saying is this block is expecting its first parameter to be an integer and it's not going to return anything. That's all it's saying. So it doesn't matter if this value right here is the index or if it's a random number, that's up for you to decide. Here, we're passing in the index because we want to know when we're using a repeater function, what index we are uh, when we're repeating. Are we the fifth iteration, et cetera, or the 20th iteration? Uh, what are we doing at that point in time? Okay, so there, now we have that repeater. So let's go ahead and comment this out. So let's assume we wanted to have to do something a little bit different. So let's say we have, let's call it a function called derby announcer. And this derby announcer function is going to take in a lambda expression. This lambda expression will look like this. It'll be a block of code. It's going to take in a string. So this first parameter is going to be a string. And then it's actually going to return a string. So this lambda expression is going to return a string. And this announcer is spelled wrong. And so what we'll do here is let me fill this out. Okay, we're back so you didn't have to see me type. So the derby announcer function does a few things. It has a lambda expression, it's a block. That block takes in a string as a parameter and then it returns a string. And then what we, we're gonna do here is this is gonna be like a home run derby announcer. And these are different names of perhaps some baseball players. So you have McGuire, Canseco, Honeycutt, Davis, Dolly, Weiss, etc. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly choose a player's name and then to the screen, we're gonna put the next player's name. The next player is whatever this random word is. Now it's gonna be, you know, we can change this to random player. At that point, this will print to the screen. And then what we wanna do is maybe we wanna have some type of log that we wanna to print to the screen, but we're gonna, we don't know what that's gonna be, or we might not wanna, you know, print some other type of thing. We could call it a log, could call it, you know, something from the announcer. Announcer topic, announcer message, Let's do that. But we don't know what that's going to be because it could vary between announcer and so each announcer could be a little bit different and so what we want to do is allow the announcer to say what they want to say and so we're going to delegate that back up to the block and remember we're going to pass in the random player that we chose we're going to pass back up to them but this block also returns a string remember so if we look at this block it takes in a string right here it takes in a string and then it returns a string so if we were to, to implement this what we could do as we would say derby announcer and we're just going to pass in a lambda expression again it's going to take in a met you know a, a player this is what's going to be sent in so it's going to take a string we could say this is a string or we could use type inference and then we can go ahead and do something and now we need to return something out of here and we can say something like this player is a great asset to the team and this is the value that's going to be returned. Remember, because it's the last value in the Lambda expression, it's what's going to be returned inside of here. Now, if I did length, we're going to run into a problem. Why? Because it's we're expecting a string, but we're giving it back an integer. So, okay, now we have this. So the Derby announcer says, is going, is going to say something. The Derby announcer is going to say this player is a great asset to the team. So now what's going to happen if we run this is that the Derby announcer, we don't know what player we're going to get, but here we get, we get the next player is Canseco. Canseco is a great asset to the team. And again, the way this happens is Derby announcer gets called. We have a list of players. We grab a random player off of that list. We then print something to the screen. We then take that random player. We send it to the block, which is this player here. We then do something with it. So this could be any string. So it depends on the Derby announcer, whoever's using the Derby announcer Lambda expression. It could be a number of things. I mean, it could be going out to a database, could be going to a web service. It could be going to a big, you know, a Megatron at a big ballpark to, to generate stuff. Uh, and then once that is happens, we go ahead and take that value and we send that value of whatever message we have. We're going to send it back to, you know, through the Lambda expression saying, well, here's what we want to return. The Lambda expression takes that and then does something with it. And here it's just going to print it to the screen. So we're basically coming in here, 
hopping back out, doing something, grabbing the value outside of this external function uh, of this Lambda expression inside of here, bringing it back inside of this function and then doing something with it again. So we're allowing it to like yield some control for, at this, this line right here is allowing us to yield some control to some outside caller which is really powerful. And this enables you to do some really powerful things. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a string. It could be any types of things. It doesn't have to return a string. It could be returning all different kinds of things. And so this is how you can use Lambda expressions by passing them as parameters, as you know, arguments into other functions. You can create your own Lambda expressions to pass around. You can create your own functions that require Lambda expressions. And then you can delegate behavior back to, uh, to the caller. You may be developing an API and you know that you wanted to get something from the end user, but you don't know what, but you want to give them a little bit of data. Here I'm saying, this is my announcer, perhaps my I'm creating a, some code for a, a, a baseball field and this announcer uh, is going to be, you know, get a random player for whatever reason, maybe it's a home run derby. And so we're going to get the random player. Who knows what they're going to say from there, but I need to get that information back because maybe I need to take this information and give it to a teleprompter. Maybe it needs to show up on a teleprompter. I don't know. So all different kinds of things you can do, but you can delegate this stuff pretty easily using Lambda expressions.